by the political elites, embraced by the young and the old, passed from generation to generation, and even has base in the Constitution. This explains the assumption that conflicts in Nigeria is motivated by ethnic competition. Nigerians must ask, how did we get here? What and who are responsible? Why are other countries like India, Indonesia, Brazil, United States, Switzerland, Belgium, China, etc., which are as diverse as Nigeria, not half as obsessed with their diversity? The ethnic diversity of Nigeria has more or less been a threat rather than a source of national pride and development as countries above have experienced. Why? Ethnicity had played manifesting roles in Nigerian politics since the pre-colonial era and is arguably one of the important causes of conflict and an overall obstacle to economic development of the country. Sadly, the foundation of Nigerian party's politics was strabally oriented as portrayed in the first and the fourth republics. For example, shortly after independence, the political sign of the first republic transmitted a pure picture of Nigeria's ethno-religious division. The action group, AG, was dominant only in the western region, mainly Yoruba speaking group, and headed by Chief Obafemi Awolowo. The National Council of Nigerian Citizens, NCNC, formerly National Council of Nigeria and Cameroons, allied with the Igbo tribe and was dominant only in the eastern Nigeria. Why the Northern People's Congress, NPC, was formed by the Jama Arewa, Hausa Fulani ethnic group, and dominated only in the Northern Nigeria. All the parties were formed along ethnic lines. Apparently, the British colony administrators and the regional autonomy reinforced the division of the three regions, a factor which contributed to ethno-regional character of governance in Nigeria. By 1914, for ease of governance, the British amalgamated the Northern and Southern protectorates and one political Nigeria was born. But as soon as they left in 1960, inter suspicion resurfaced. Several coups and counter-coups motivated by ethnic settlements culminated in the 13 month 1967 to 1970 civil war, which claimed the lives of more than 2 million people. Incidentally, more than 90% of those killed belongs to an ethnic extraction, which further exacerbates distrust among one another. According to the report of the National Opinion Survey of International Foundation for Electoral Systems, IFAS, Washington, D.C., an independent survey of public opinion in Nigeria states ethnicity as the strongest type of identity among Nigerian sampling, 48.2%, as compared to 28.4% occupational identities, while 21% identify themselves with a religion. This is more or less a confirmation of the obvious. The correlation between ethnicity and the electorate is identified on aggregate, and this shows that an electorate have tendency to concentrate his or her vote along discernible ethnic lines. 
the 2011 general elections in Nigeria gave a clearer view. The outcome of the presidential election shows a pattern of votes that was deeply ethnic and religion oriented. Both candidates had more than 95% of the votes casted in their regions. This trend is one of the early warning signs of political crisis and must be addressed in time. Several analysts have argued that the political behavior of some Nigerians is influenced heavily by the hyperbolic assumption that one's destiny is intrinsically and inclusively linked with one's ethnic, linguistic, and religious identities. Ethnicity has flourished because the Nigeria elites who inherited the colonial state have conceptualized development as transferring resources from civil public to primordial public. It is in this view that Nigeria is a failed state. With a number of factors that included cultural and value decadence, fragile political structure, poor leadership and frequent ethno-religious crises. Conflicts in Nigeria most often link with religion or ethnicity and mostly deploy to settle economic and political imbalances, really the evolution of ethnic militias such as the Bakasi Boys, Movement for Actualization of Sovereign State of Biafra, Udua People's Congress, Ibesu Boys, Movement for Emancipation of Niger Delta, Arewa Forum, Yandaba, Boko Haram, Basi Group, etc. The impacts of ethnicity include inability to fight corruption. There is a tradition in Nigeria that forbid citizens from exposing or prosecuting fellow tribesmen for corrupt practices. Corrupt tendencies are exhibited and laws violated, yet such individuals invoke ethnic sentiment to get away from or prevent prosecution. Employment, guarantee of employment or award of contract in public service is a function of one's prize person in position of authority. The phrase, it is our term, was coined from this practice. Merit and excellence are sacrificed on the altar of primordial thinking. Politics of division, current political tension in the country is mainly as a result of avoidable clash between forces of democracy and that of tribal interests. The political power play in the name of building consensus within political party structures have negatively influenced a tradition or imagined mentality of political office rotation between the North and the South. In fact, an analyst posits that this form, the fortune of scaling of Boko Haram is urgency, that the ethnic elements in the north felt cheated when the seat of power did it return to them in 2011, as agreed within the ruling party. Distrust, the fundamental impact of tribalism in Nigeria, is a culture of distrust amongst various ethnic groups in the country. Due to distrust, confidence on objective and legitimate issues, 
of poverty and environmental pollution in the Niger Delta is travelized as Ijo issues or as Ogoni issues. Promotion of mediocrity and suppression of justice. Tribalism flourishes in Nigeria mainly because it is an effective tool that gives the user an edge in the internal struggle to gain government patronage, that is political appointments. After getting the appointment, tribal settlement is again used as a cover to abuse the office and then to escape justice after leaving the office. Tribalism and politics are scarcely separable in Nigeria. As in most developing countries, ideological issues in politics tends to take second place. After all, there are not really so many alternatives with the resources at its disposal. A new country scarcely has a choice between capitalism, socialism, or other isms. Political argument is largely argument between individuals competing for power or groups of people quarreling over the best way to share the limited national cake. Sharing that cake has nothing to do with high floating ideas, but it does matter to people. This is what makes tribalism so fierce. It is not that different tribes dislike each other. The trouble is they are competing for such scarce commodities as scholarships, jobs. In a developing country, the state is the biggest employer, and the group which controls the state controls the jobs, industries, amenities, and so on. No wonder, therefore, that tribal passions run high in politics. And in Nigeria, just now they are threatening to break the country violently apart. Tribalism is a pejorative word. Among Africans, no less than among their European critics. Yet one wonders whether in Nigeria at any rate, it is the right word to use. Nigeria has dozens of tribal and linguistic groups, most of them very small. But it is not the same groups that are causing the trouble. It is the rivalry of three big groups, the Hausa of the North, the Igbo of the East, and the Yoruba of the West. These groups are important enough in themselves to be called nations. Certainly, they have all the common attributes of nations, a common language, a common history, and a common way of life. They are not only nations, but large nations, much bigger than many an independent state in Africa today. The house are full and in number approximately 20 million in northern Nigeria alone. Even if that figure is an official exaggeration, there are another million in the neighboring Niger Republic, and there are others in northern Ghana. The BBC Hausa service receives listeners, letters from 21 countries. The Yoruba of the Western region are officially 10 million. They also spill over into Daum and into the northern region. The Igbo account for well over half the population of the eastern region, officially given as 12 million. Ethnicity and racism are closely related, but they may exist separately. Ethnicity is character of social relationship existing between members of two or more ethnic groups 
in a plural society. While racism is a set of beliefs, attitudes, and practices that is used to justify the superior treatment of one racial group and inferior treatment of another group. This diversity in lifestyle is what leads to ethnicity and racism. The following are the major differences between ethnicity and racism in Nigeria, which include religious discrimination. There are various forms of religions in Nigeria, but the predominant ones include Islam, Christianity, and African traditional religion. Therefore, areas in which the religion that dominates tend to discriminate against those that are minority. Take some cases of Kano riots in 1991, 1995, 1999, and 2004. This is a clear case of ethno-religious conflict. Also in Christian-dominated region, Christians tend to show superiority to Muslim faithful. Cultural discrimination. Nigeria is made up of different ethnic groups, but the three main ethnic groups include the Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbos. All these groups, even within their internal societies, tend to discriminate against each other. For the Igbos, take the case of Osu. Igbos believe that most communists in Imo state are Osu, meaning that they are outcasts Therefore, Igbos are not allowed to marry or associate with such. The Mogun spell in Yoruba land prevents men from any ethnic background from sleeping with Yoruba women with the belief that they are cursed. And this cause is transferable to any man that takes them as wives or even sleep with them. The premonition then was that once you sleep with a Yoruba woman from Ibado, Ogu, Osunek, you are asking for your death. Political discrimination. As the history of Nigeria has its power, is predominantly titled towards the north, some from the west and a little to the south and east. The middle bed are sidelined and left out of this loop-sided distribution which is clear case of ethnopolitical discrimination. Other cases of social discrimination in Nigeria include the educational sector, where Yoruba people dominate. Women, if not of recent, were never given a say in national issues. Neither were they given positions of power. Tribalism or ethnicity has been the cankerworm disturbing the vegetables of Nigeria unity. If indeed Nigeria oneness is non negotiable, then serious attention should be given to this matter. There have been serious debates on whether Nigeria should disintegrate or even restructure. But whether or not Nigeria restructure, tribalism is a big problem that needs to be reviewed. Tribalism is a political anomaly that characterized by parts of a group of people organized, advocating and segregating from the rest of the group. It is largely a behavioral defunct where people are more loyal to their tribes than to their country. Or other social groups. In Nigeria, the most populous black nation, there is a massive representation of tribal groups, mostly connected by language or sometimes religion. Nigeria accommodates over 500 languages and three major religions. It is, however, indicative of their bias every individual is. Everyone is either ethnic or religious biased, and such bias is reflective in 
their daily conversations, debates and national topics. Nigeria will align and create special forces to push their respective agendas. The Niger Delta militants in the south, Biafra Masob IPOP in the east, OPC in the west and Arewa in the north. Every one of them fighting for legitimate supremacy of power. It is, however, not too strange to Nigeria contemporary setting. Instances of tribalism can be traced to even the run-up, build-up to the formation of Nigeria. Remember the story of how the British ruled Nigeria with separate ideology. Remember the activities of Nigeria founder fathers before the independence. Political parties built on ethnic divides. Those were, in fact, the nurseries of Nigeria's present day situations. It only grew on Nigeria into an epidemic. Tribalism has officially dominated Nigeria political thinking and philosophy as a nation. Tribalism is now a way of life. It fueled the 1967 civil war. It crashed Nigeria's system and it still is not done yet. This is the reason why Nigeria will hardly ever have a successful revolution or protest. And how some man we less want to be associated with an Igbo led movement and vice versa. Not because it is not viable, but because of the ethnic intolerance. It would have been better if this happening yield productive results to Nigeria development. But it rather dampens and stall Nigerian progress. One will begin to wonder. How countries like America, Brazil, Belgium, and even Indonesia, with a larger conglomeration of tribes, are flourishing and progressing economically. According to the British Lords, Nigeria was amalgamated in 1914 for ease of governance. It's so sad how the predicted ease has become hardship in reverse. Since 1914, the nation have been witnessing series of ups and downs not to distance from tribal wars. According to reports, about 50% of Nigerians, or even more, will identify themselves first with their ethnic groups first before Nigeria. It is as bad as parents bearing their children from marrying outside their tribe. There is free known integration across boundary. This has made some analysts began to question if truly a nation ever existed. Tribalism also mitigates the effect of the fight against corruption. Even with the president hell bent on fighting the anti graft war, the presence of the bigger one, tribalism, is bound to stop him. Nigeria tribalized corruption cases in court and on the media. Politically, it divides Nigeria's mission. Nigeria know what transpires in Nigerians' elections. Nigerians know how Nigerian votes and supports their tribesmen into power without meeting the conditions. In all, one will categorically say that ethnicity is the beginning and the end of Nigeria's real problems. Nigeria should begin to give more credence to the concept of place of residence over the insulting state of origin syndrome. This will go a long way 
in solving this situation. Nigeria can confidently say without any form of provocation that my name is Dan Fulani Chidoze. I am from Osu State. Finally, the constitution as well should be looked into to amend some tribalistic terms and notions inherent inside of it. Middle Belt is, as the name implies, is the Middle Belt of Nigeria, and it is the uh, religious doldrum of the winds. Christianity coming from the south, and Islam coming from the north, and world meeting there. And I see this strongly as uh, an issue that violence may occur around the fort line. of the people within the country that they have not seen been treated fairly. Whenever we go for a meeting at the Zazo Emirate, the Emir normally tells us, tell people to learn how to live in peace with one another and then try to see that a uh, job is being created and then wherever there is chance for our people to be absorbed, we should try and do it. The government has been saying that peace, there is no development without peace. So whoever wants to go, whichever country wants to go,